see my van, the Abyss. From the outside, it probably just looks like a regular work van. I painted this wall gray to make it for stealth. Uh, being a, a single solo traveling female, that was really important to me to have my stealth and safety. So how I built this wall was I took two by fours and I made a frame for the door and I put king studs, put all of the studs in first, and then I put the quarter inch birch plywood on top of it. And on, on the other side, I put in my poly iso insulation. So I have two inches of insulation in the wall because I knew with all the windows in here, that's where a lot of the temperature fluctuation would come from. And I just used a regular doorknob with a lock on the inside so that if somebody were to potentially break into here, they would have to get past the lock on the door. So there'd be some multiple barriers for somebody trying to cause harm. So here we have the inside of the abyss, which is another reason that her name is Abyss is because it kind of takes you into the unknown, it being stealthy and all. So here we go into here. It's a relatively simple build. I made it so it was just really comfortable, cozy. I wasn't too worried about too many bells and whistles because I knew that I would really only be in here to sleep uh, and sometimes to take breaks during lunch. I like to come in here and just lay down and take a little nap. Um, yeah, so I have these little battery powered lights and they're detachable so I can change the batteries on them. That way I didn't have to mess with lithium stuff. Eventually I could go solar, which is why I took off one of the planks because I was going to do a solar project, but again, I need a bigger rig for now a bigger family, so it never happened, but very customizable for whoever would buy it. The walls are the same as the doorway, which has the quarter inch birch plywood, and I painted it with some nice white paint. Here's the door that goes to the front cab. <laughs> so it's kind of like my little Narnia. This is a custom made, beautiful picture that my sister made me, and I wanted it to go in here. Uh, this is my little Oregon State pendant that I have because I go to OSU here in Bend. And on the ceiling, I put quarter inch cedar plywood, or sorry, cedar planking. And then I put polyurethane to protect it and it made a nice little amber color on there. Um, and as for the build inside here, this is my bed. I used two by threes and two by fours to make the Douglas fir frame. And I went with Doug fir just cause I like the look of it and it's a really sturdy wood. Um, underneath it, there's plenty of storage space. I didn't need too much because being by myself, I'm pretty low maintenance and I really just needed my clothes, food, um, emergency supplies. I have a camera because I like photography, my computer, and then all the rest of the stuff would just go in uh, my cabinets, which we can go into next. In here, I have just some nice racks and up here I had a lot of just like knickknacks and chargers and stuff like that. Down here I had more dishware had like a cutting board, some cups, a plate, a bowl, and my jet boil, which is what I would use for heating up coffee. And I had a little propane stove to make my dinners and stuff if I was camping. And then down this way, we have my gray water tank, which is pretty gross right now. I need to clean it out. And my little trash can. And I just made this little setup with the, the piping. It's pretty simple and I've never had any issues with it. I taped it because it was the caulking I used was white and I wanted it to be black so that's why there's tape there. No other reason. The inside is painted with some really sturdy water resistant paint because I knew that mildew would be an issue but I've never had that problem in here which is pretty great. Um, up here in the sink area I have a drop down stainless sink. It's I like the drop down because I'm able to just kind of scoop stuff down into it if I need to. And I did not go with a piping system with like a running faucet because I knew I wasn't going to have a battery set up in here. It's very rustic, super simple. The way I like it, great for if you have anxiety and you don't want to deal with electric stuff. And I didn't really need it anyways because I just used my five gallon water jug to use for fresh water. And then that way it goes right down to the gray water tank. And bada boom, that's my sink system. Very simple, easy to clean, low maintenance. And then we have my Live Edge cedar countertop. I had a friend in a big storm. 
her property, a bunch of trees fell, so she cut me one of these slabs with her bandsaw, so I was able to have a locally sourced, beautiful redwood counter. And I treated it, sanded it, treated it, and I put polyurethane on top of it as well to seal any kind of areas that would have moisture issues. And I cut a big piece off to have a nice backsplash to go with it. So that's the counter area. I would mainly use the counter for my heater at night, and I also had my Yeti battery, which was what I used to charge. And when my Yeti battery was close to out of power, I would just charge it at school or at a friend's house or something. So it, it really wasn't a big deal having to do that. For cool air, I use battery powered fans because again, I don't have electricity in here, so everything's battery powered. So I have lots of extra batteries with me propane heater for the cold. This whole van is winterized, so what was really nice about having this was it was really easy to use and it heats up the room really quickly. So that was pretty great. And I have these roof vents in here to help with any kind of issue with moisture buildup. And I actually put two vents because I knew that without the electric fan, I would need to have airflow. So the two vents, when it's a little, even just a little bit of wind, which is a lot here in Central Oregon, it'll already fluctuate everything through. So if I have any propane going, if it's stuffy, if it's moist in here, it'll just go right out through the vents. So that's really nice for in the morning. I wake up and I just open it. And I look out at the trees, sky, buildings, whatever's there. But it's nice to have some fresh air on your face when you're tired in a scrunched little van like this. The bed itself has, show you, underneath all these blankets, just custom cut, really nice memory foam. And this is a alpaca wool rug. So I made that for comfort. It's really nice because it's custom made so I didn't have to go get a specialty sized mattress or anything. And honestly, this thing's comfier than my bed at home. So, slept like a baby every night. This is my compost toilet. <laughs> and it's so sneaky because it's in my little ottoman, and it's also my chair. So what I would use for that, and I would only go number one, because you can't throw away number two just in regular trash. So it was really just for those midnight peas, because I'm a girl and jars just don't work for me. So I would use rabbit paper. <laughs> you can get it from the pet store, it's like five bucks. Put that in a biodegradable plastic bag. Get up in the middle of the night, go for a piss close it, and it's your chair again. <laughs> so not bad. So next up on the Abyss van build, I'm going to talk about why I used burlap on various parts of it. So there's a couple reasons. The main reason is because I wanted it to cover any other bare metal spots or any kind of exposed insula insulation because I wanted it to look nice. Uh, I didn't want any stuff poking out like this. So this is if, since it's not going to be for solar for me, I might just patch some more burlap over it in the meantime, then whoever wants to buy the van, they can decide to go that route if they want to take it back off. Um, yeah, I liked it also because it looks rustic. Um, there was a another Instagram guy who had a van, and he had burlap in his, and that's where I got inspired by it. I thought it was really cool looking, so. And I worked at a coffee shop in Eugene, and we had a bunch of those bags there, so got it for free. That's another thing is while you're building is saving money and spending the least amount as possible is really important, especially if you want a good bang for your buck. And if you're going to resell it later, then you're not like worrying about being able to compensate for how much you spent on it. So most of my supplies were from Habitat for Humanity, uh, local businesses that were just throwing things away, friends, Craigslist, Facebook. Um, occasionally I would have to go to big stores like Home Depot, but I tried not to if I could help it. So. And then the other thing I was going to talk about was the floors. So I used, there's a couple different layers. The reason being, you don't really need to insulate your floors very much at all because heat rises. So really the ceiling's the most important. That's why there's two inches of insulation on the ceiling. But on the floor, you don't need as much. I still put a little bit just in case. I put um, a half inch of the pink foam board because you can step on it a little bit better. It's not going to crack. And I used, uh, fat mat rattle trap which is a sound deadener so that was really nice to go on there as well because walking around in here can get a little loud sometimes and then over that I put the subflooring which was a 
quarter, no, it was a half inch, no, sorry, third inch of plywood. And then I put the laminate flooring, tongue and groove over it. And I got like the walnut color because I liked the dark contrast to the cedar and the white walls. So basically when you're doing a van, a van build or you're buying a van, really important things to think about are the quality of the work, how much time and labor went into the work because you can kind of tell if something was kind of quickly thrown together. Um, and then you want to be able to utilize it and when you're sitting in it, imagine yourself like what you would be doing. When I bought this van, it was a shell. So I bought it completely naked and I got the van for about five grand. Um, it's a 2008, it had 170,000 miles on it and it was really hard to find a van that wasn't really old with a ton of miles on it for a good price. So I finally found one, nabbed it. It was at the Oregon coast. And then I was like, okay, I have a van now. Uh, now what? <laughs> so there are several steps and processes. I'll just go through them really quick. I won't take a lot of time on it, but basically you have to make sure there's no rust. That's a big thing to look for when you're looking for a van or building out a van. Rust can be so expensive over time to fix, you know, nuts and bolts will get uh, corroded and then it's longer labor times which means more money for you to pay <laughs> so make sure rust is not a big problem the other thing was making sure it gets well insulated especially if you're in an area that's gonna be really cold or really hot because I've been in this thing in the heat of summer 100 degrees and it wasn't bad at all because I have it so nicely insulated um, still gets hot like it's not, definitely not perfect but it's better than being outside sometimes uh, and then the, lastly, um, a big tip I would have is just have fun with it. Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't try to look like all the Instagram people. Like, think about that stuff later. You really want a good quality build. And then you can do all your bells and whistles and cuteness to it afterwards. But you want to make sure the foundation of what you're building is going to be really suitable and last you a long time. Well, thank you for joining me in my tour of my van, The Abyss. I'm really happy to share any knowledge I have with her, with anybody. It's really fun. It's a beautiful experience to build a van, but it's also an even more amazing one to live in one. I had the honor of living in this one for quite a while, almost a year, and I don't regret it at all. It was really great. Um, yeah, so thank you. Again, my name is Liz, and I hope you enjoyed.